Welcome to this first look at add-on software. This introduction will focus on the basic layout of the solution and demonstrate the thought put into both the presentation consistency and user control. We'll start by giving you a quick look around to provide a feel for the layout, organization, and navigation. We will look at the flexibility we have built into the digital dashboard. I will demonstrate the search, filtering, and output options. I'll touch on a few of the handy user features that we've built into the product and we'll have a look at the role-based security and auditing system. Then we'll look at the reporting options. And finally, I will demonstrate the workforce language flexibility at the individual user level. So firstly, let's have a look at the digital dashboard. Here is the digital dashboard feature found in add-on software. There are drop-down selections to adjust your data views. What you're looking at is a set of data widgets and they can be expanded to provide a better view. I can also save the graphic. I can email it and I can force a refresh of the data. In the standard view, I have the same output functions and the ability to set the refresh settings. I can set the refresh rate in seconds, minutes, or hours, and include a numeric value on the front of that. The dashboard can be customized to display what each user requires. So I'm going to remove a few of these, and also note that I can change the order in which those widgets are displaying. Selecting Customize opens the Charts tab where I can review all of the widgets available and their descriptions and I can add those widgets back that I had just deleted. Let's look at the menu options we have in the top left corner of the screen. Add-on software is distributed in three fully integrated bundles accounting, distribution, and manufacturing. The upper left panel displays the modules, and when we select the Accounts Payable module, the tasks associated with that module are displayed in the lower left panel. The tasks are displayed in workflow order to add efficiency and speed for our users. Commonly used tasks are displayed open for easy launching, while other less used tasks are neatly organized into the folders below. This structure is consistent from module to module, when I select a module in the top panel as I'm doing, notice that the associated tasks below change. This current view is the administrator's view, so I am displaying all the modules available, all tasks, all administrative functions. Other types of users can be assigned to more restrictive views. For example, AP clerks may only be able to see and select the AP module, and they can be further restricted to a set of AP tasks, and within those tasks, there can be limitations placed on what they can view add, edit, or delete. Let's select the Accounts Receivable module and in the lower panel in the Maintenance folder I will select the Customer's task to launch the Customer Master Record. Notice that I have navigation buttons across the bottom and I can also clear a record if I've made a mistake and I can move forward and backward within the data set. Forms can be launched in multiple document interface as I've done here or in single document interface, SDI, or launched in a browser. I do this simply by selecting the task with a right click. In SDI mode, the form is no longer constrained by the application frame and can be moved around independently. This is very handy for multi-screen workplaces and puts the user in control of their screen real estate. Selecting launch in browser launches the user's default browser and the selected form. The entire application can be launched in the browser since it is using JavaScript and HTML5. This is all achieved with a single code set for both the presentation and logic levels. Let's return to that accounts receivable form and clear it. I will enter customer 100 in the customer ID field and I can either tab or use the enter key to leave the field and it populates the record for Customer 100 Everest Industries. Also note that users have the option to use either their mouse or keyboard for this type of navigation. Have a look at the comfortable and modern screen layout with tabs across the top to display additional information. When I select the Display Additional Options button from the bottom of the frame, it reveals a drop-down list to quickly launch new windows with additional information for this particular customer record. Returning to the customer record I selected, Let's select the Profile tab to display information commonly used in the order entry process. Next to each profile field, notice that there's a magnifying glass lookup button to quickly access records for that particular record type. 
To the right of the lookup button is the description of the code entered into that field, and that is hyperlinked to the code's master record. Let's select the Aging and Sales Summary tab to reveal a snapshot of the financial activity for this customer. Notice that next to the Balance and Sales Total fields are drill-down buttons that reveal details for that particular field. Additional drill-downs can be easily added to the solution by the reseller to meet the user's specific needs. Selecting the drill-down button next to the Balance field opens a grid that displays the invoices whose totals equal $18,024. Notice that we have column totals for the invoice amount, total transaction, and invoice balance. Additionally, we have hyperlinks that are inserted to take us down to the individual invoice for a quick look. The columns can be sorted in ascending or descending order by clicking on the column header. A blue triangle indicates what sorting is active. Multiple column sorts can be created using the shift key and then selecting additional column headers. Hovering over a sorted column reveals the sort order and what else has been selected. A single click in the column header clears the selections. Let's close the grid and clear the master form. Using the lookup for customer records launches another grid. This will demonstrate the search and query functions that are a part of all grids in the add-on software product. There is a search field in the top portion and I've selected to search the customer name column. I enter the letter R, and without any additional keystrokes, it quickly locates customers whose names begin with R. There's also a wildcard capability, and we're going to use wildcard S-P-O-R-T. And that reveals customer names with the word sport in them. Searches can also be made case sensitive or insensitive, and I have the ability to search all columns as well using the checkbox. To efficiently export this data from this or any grid and add-on software, simply right-click on the grid to display the export record functions. From here, I can select the type of output, be it PDF, CSV, TXT, XLS, XML, or of course, I can send it directly to the system printer. Selecting inquiry columns empowers users to display only the columns that are relevant to their reporting needs. Columns can be removed from view by deselecting the adjacent checkboxes and then selecting the OK button. Column order is also set here by selecting a column and we can either drag it into position or we can use the toggles up here, move up, move down. You move that in the first position and click OK and our grid reflects the change. For large data sets requiring filtering before saving and outputting, I also have the option of launching the filter wizard up here in the right corner. There I can create my own filter criteria for the data. Using the wizard I can quickly create my own filters using column selects. I'm going to come down and select the state column. I select the operator value equal to in a value CA. We'll be looking for those California customers. Selecting enter populates an editable text box where power users can create and edit their own SQL statements. Selecting execute executes the SQL statement and what is now displaying are my California records. This query can be saved and named where it will appear as a selection next to the filter wizard button and it can optionally be saved as a filter common for all users on the system. I've named this one Cali. I select save and I now have this filter saved in the dropdown. Let's return the full data set and here's my Cali filter and I've saved that for the next time I come back into this function. There are many handy user-centered features throughout add-on software that make the solution an easy-to-use work environment. I can create and save my report selections for the next time I need to run a report. For example, in the AP module, I select the aging report, will make a change to period or days, will change it the default to days, and this enables the save button. I can save that, name it, and again, I have a choice of making this a public or private selection for my specific user profile. So I can check that box and I can do the save. The next time I come back into this aging report, I have the filter criteria saved. I've got several of them saved now. Here's the one I just created. And when I select that, it rolled the period or days over to days and now I run my report. This is great for standardizing commonly run reports all the way down to the user level or up across the organization. Another handy user feature is the ability to quickly rerun a task previously run in the same session without using the navigation tree. Down here in the bottom left, 
I can select this drop down and it shows me what I've run in this session. I can select customers, go back to that customer form, and launch it directly from there. Yet another navigation aid is the user favorites feature. Each user can create and manage their own favorites list to move quickly around the solution. I can simply right click on a task and select add to favorites. The task has now been added to my favorites list located at the top of the application frame and selecting it can launch the task. Favorites can be launched across modules and across bundles and it's a real time saver. Let's touch on the role-based security I mentioned earlier. Add-on software users are created and assigned to a role or a series of roles. Each role has a set of defined permissions by module, task, form, all the way down to a field level within a form. Permissions can be set to allow or disallow viewing, adding, modifying, deleting, or printing records. Running in parallel to role-based security is an audit log feature that records the user, date, time, and the old and new values. Let's just go and see how this works. I'm selecting Barista Administration in the upper left panel and in the lower panel in the Security folder, let's look at Security Roles. Using the navigation keys, we can see that in the demo data we have a few defined roles, Administrator, Guest, and Restricted Access Role. I can create new roles here or delete a role. I can also assign an effective date for future or temporary roles using beginning and ending date fields and I can assign blanket administrative privileges using the checkbox. Permissions for the role are set by the administrator in the same area by selecting Security Administration. Selecting a defined role in the top panel displays the defined permissions for each area of the solution in the lower panel. Editing permissions is as simple as clicking in a field to allow or restrict the user's ability to view, add, modify, delete, or print. I selected the guest role and I've come all the way down to these terms codes and I've enabled viewing but I have restricted adding, modifying, deleting, or printing and changing it is simple as clicking on the task underneath the function and then saving it out. Change auditing is also administered in this area. Clicking on a task launches a new window with the auditing tab. Here I can create an auditing path for any additions, modifications, or deletions and as I previously mentioned, audit records are created preserving the username, date time, and old and new values. Let's have a look at add-on software's reporting capabilities and types. Let's return to Accounts Payable in the upper left panel and then the Aging Report task. I accept the defaults this time and run the report and I've created a report that still provides the user with formatting control and output options. One of the formatting controls allows users to adjust columns by selecting the column adjust button in the top. In here I can adjust column widths by simply sliding the borders on the column headers. So let's stretch out the first column. I'm going to select save, select refresh, and that change, the additional spacing on column one is reflected in what I'm seeing now. When running this report in the future, the report will display the way I like it. Report output types can be pre-configured or the user can be given permissions to select their own output format and type. Selecting the output selection buttons produces the selection window where the document format, PDF, CSV, etc. and type, save to disk, email, fax, an interface with Google Docs, or a simple launch, or just send it on to the system printer can be selected. When I'm done with my selections, I would select the Create button. Other reports and add-on software are created using the open source Jaspersoft Studio Report Writer. An example of that is the customer statement. I'm going to go to Accounts Receivable and we're going to go back to that customer's file, roll it forward to Everest Industries and use the drop-down to get us to the statement function. Accept the defaults and I've created a customer statement using the Jaspersoft Report Writer. A part of a new partner training is to become proficient with this tool to create modern, professional-looking statements and reports wherever the customer requires them. From within this window, I can print to a system printer, I can email it, and I have several Save As options.
save, save as, and save as a Google Doc up in the clouds. The final feature I wanted to show you is the solution's language adaptability. Add-on software is adaptable to the workforce language of the installation site at the user level. Here I am back at a login screen, but before logging in, I select in the bottom right corner, there's a drop down that exposes a list of languages. I make my selection and I log into the solution. Thanks for taking these couple of minutes to explore add-on software, and I'm sure you have some questions.